this will be a brief introduction to graphing surfaces in space. And I'll begin by focusing on the very simplest examples, but the most important thing you should get from this is the idea of, of slicing a surface and seeing what curves you get by doing this. So let's start with the very simplest thing, which is an equation missing a variable. So what I mean by an equation that, that doesn't have one of the variables in it, take for example x squared plus y squared equals 4, well if we didn't, if we weren't thinking about things in three dimensions, we would just uh, think of this as a circle of radius 2. But if we think of things in three dimensions, well, there's another variable z. And so we can think of this as, as all points x, y, and z that satisfy this equation. And this gives us a surface in three dimensions. And it'll turn out this is a cylinder. Uh, so why should it be a cylinder? So here's the equation again. And so we just think about, well, this doesn't depend on z. So when z is 0, this is just the xy plane, we get all points x comma y comma zero, points of this form will be on this surface exactly when x comma y is a point on the circle. And, and the same holds for, for z equals one, we get points of this form will be on the surface exactly when x comma y is a point on the circle. And you see, no matter what z value we take, we get the same shape. So in three dimensions, what do we have? z is 0 is the xy plane. In that plane, we have the circle of radius 2. So that is a circle. I have to sort of draw it in perspective because this is three dimensions now. And when z is 1, I get the same circle, but it's moved up 1. And when z is 2, you get the same circle moved up 1 again. If I take z is negative 1, I go down and draw the same circle. And if you keep drawing these, you'll see that the shape you get is, is this cylinder. And you could fill this out with a whole bunch of circles. And I hope you believe that this is a cylinder. And more generally, any time you have an equation missing a variable, you can think of it as a type of cylinder. And now I'm using the term cylinder in a more general way because I'm thinking of it as I have some shape and I'm just sort of looking at the path it takes in one specific direction. So let me give a simple example. 
if I look at the equation z equals x squared, well, this doesn't depend on y. So we only get, so the picture won't depend on what y value we're at. So if I, if I draw the xz plane separately, I'll always just get this parabola. So for y equals 0, y equals 1, and so forth, we'll always get the same shape. So what does that look like? Well, for if y is equal to 0, we're on the xz plane. And the shape we get is this parabola. And I'm drawing it kind of funny because I have to draw it in perspective. If I move over, say, 2, and look at all of the places where y is equal to 2, I have the same shape, but shifted over here. If I shift over two more, I have the same shape. And so you get this, this type of shape. And I'll insert some three-dimensional graphs to show this a little better to you. But that's what it looks like with a little shading. And again, we think of this as a cylinder because we're sort of taking the same curve and translating it in one direction. Well, cylinders are some of the simplest surfaces that we can have in three dimensions because we're basically just looking at something in two dimensions and stretching it out in one direction.